And continuing on this thread of developing skills, we want to bring up Gil Griffin, who was going to talk to us about a transdisciplinary unit that was done in the third grade. And this unit provides a bunch of different skills and it allows the students to connect on many different levels. So please welcome Gil Griffin. <laughs> to you about um, a third grade experience, actually. In third grade, for our unit of inquiry on how we organize ourselves, our students do an economics unit. So at the culmination of the unit, our kids have a sale where they sell products that they've made. And I know if you were to ask any of our third graders what their favorite part of the economics unit was, they would say the sale. And you really can't blame them for that because you get to do really cool things like make and sell lava lamps. I love this animation here. I'm thrilled about those decorated picture frames. You get to invite the LE students to come to the classroom and shop. You get to invite your parents to come. You usually sell out of all your products. Real money is exchanged. A good time is had by all. <laughs> but as an educator, the sale is my least favorite part of this unit because I think everything else in this unit is what makes the learning experience so valuable. And I think it's a great example of how we teach in a conceptual-based manner here at Whitby so that the learning experiences are relevant, engaging, and challenging. Another great thing about this unit is that it's a perfect example of how we teach in a transdisciplinary manner here at school. So, to highlight what I mean by the transdisciplinary learning, I've highlighted some of the connections that happen in the classroom, and really this list could go on further than this. Um, it's economics, of course, is a natural tie to social studies. Um, math connections, I have to, sorry, I have to make this joke if you've heard it a thousand times before, I'm sorry, but if I ask kids to add and subtract decimals, there's always the panic, I can't do it, forget it. But if you ask them to add or subtract money, or figure out profits or losses, forget it. They're willing and willing. Um, there's usually, um, there's, oh, I'm sorry, not usually. There are real life ties to science and art, depending on the product the students decide to sell. And language skills really run throughout what we're doing. Um, in addition to novel studies where there's economic themes to the books, the kids are reading about products, researching steps to make the products. They have to write a letter to Mrs. Becker requesting a loan. They have to write a business plan. They advertise. So there's just so many different ways that they're thinking about economics all throughout their experience in the day. Um, it's also a great example of how we teach or build the what we call the approaches to learning skills or the ATL skills. Um, because this unit is so inquiry based and the students are making something based on their interest, they're put into groups with people they may not necessarily know. So they have to work together with people they're not used to. Which of course fosters social skills, communication skills. They, it's up to them to make whatever they're selling at the sale. So they have to work together. They have to figure out how to organize themselves, how to decide on what the product's gonna look like, the final packaging, what they're going to buy, how much the loan's gonna be, how they're gonna set pricing. So there's a lot of negotiating and problem solving that happens all throughout. So, I also really love this unit because it brings in aspects of failure, which I think is an important thing to bring up. So I wanted to share this story with you, is that I earlier mentioned how we want our learning to be relevant. So the teachers were really excited because no joke, right about the second week of this unit starting, this article came out in the Wall Street Journal about slime and how there was this big trend with adolescents selling slime and making big profits and having all these Instagram followers. And we just showed this to the kids just to say, look, you know what we're learning is it's going on other places too. But one of the groups was inspired by this and said, you know what, let's get in on the ground floor of this trend here at Whitby and we sell slime. <laughs> so they changed their plan. They wrote a, a new loan proposal to Mrs. Becker. They got their supplies, about to start production. And again, no joke, this, oh sorry, I didn't go back. This came out <laughs> just as they got their supplies. 
So now slime's the worst thing in the world, don't even touch it. And what I loved about this experience, well, I didn't love it at the time, but I loved it later when I thought about it. But, um, what I loved about the experience is the kids had, they had very authentic conversations about what to do. They said things like, and I, I just listened to some of this, we can't sell something that'll hurt the LA students. They said, but what are we gonna do? Because we borrowed all this money from Mrs. Becker and we have to pay her back. <laughs> so they, and they had used up their money, so they had to figure out a solution. So one little girl went home every night and tried different slime recipes with what she had and would come in every morning. It didn't work. We don't have anything to sell. So they had, they experienced some stress. So after more research, more information came out that said that there was a slight risk in the production phase and not with the finished product. So we proceeded. So the teachers took care of the minorly dangerous part. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids finished up the product so they didn't make it, covered with smocks, goggles, and gloves, and they're outside in a nice, well ventilated area. <laughs> was safe. And they actually had a great experience and were the, the, one of the hits of the sale. So I think that that is just an unbelievable opportunity for kids. It's building on what Melina and Shane talked about is just what do you do if you're faced with a challenge and how do you overcome that and how do you think flexibly about that? So I think in that way the children learn how to think more critically and how they can value persistence. So for me, Going back to the beginning, the sale is just the icing on the cake. I really feel like it's all these other learning experiences that make this unit so valuable. And the sale is just the final celebration of all that important learning. So, thank you.